Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this totally unedited surgery. The ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated after applying few drops of Povidone Iodine 5%. And now, main incision. I usually do the main incision first and then the side ports. You can do the reverse. You can make the side port first and then the main incision. So here goes the main incision. This is a 2.8 millimeter keratome. The incision is made on the posterior aspect of the limbus. We can see some oozing of blood and this is good because healing is much better if we give the incision at a place where there are some blood vessels. And now this is a side port on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. And now capsular axis. This is the Lumera T microscope. The coaxial illumination gives some beautiful red glow. And here goes the capsular axis with uterita forceps. You have to maintain a speed when you use uterita forceps through the main wound. If you be slow, all the visco will come out and you lift in the anterior wall of the main wound so that leakage of visco is less. Hydro dissection is done with a 27 gauze cannula and basis. And now I am going to use the pre-chopper designed me by me in the last year, December last year. So the pre-chopper and on the left hand is the nucleus sustainer. The pre-chopper has a cutting edge in the front. It is embedded in the substance of the nucleus and just in front of the main wound, just in front of the rexus margin. The sustainer hooks the opposite equator. The two instruments come to each other and we get a very nice crack. It's just have to practice these movements in four or five surgeries to get used to it. It just doesn't have a very long you know, learning curve. It has a short learning curve. You can learn it in three, four cases. I have a fellow from abroad and he learned this technique in just five surgeries and he never did phaco surgeries. So here goes the handpiece now and see how beautifully we can emulsify the pieces. Just get at the apex of the piece and it comes so easily and you are always at the center of the anterior chamber in the central 3 millimeter, you know, uh, safe zone and here it is. You just divide the hemineucleus going along, along along the equator and just finish the nucleus in such a short time. This is a totally unedited real-time surgery. And now see cleaning of the cortex by the handpiece itself. Yes, it has some learning curve. You are going to rupture two, three posterior capsules when you learn this. You can protect the posterior capsule by the ball-tipped nucleus sustainer to some extent, but yes, you have to go through some, you know, learning curve. But if you, uh, you know, do this, it gives, you know, it, it, it helps you to complete this surgery in a very short time. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. And see the uh, rexis. The rexis is overlapping the lens all around. And the rexis is not small. So the size of the rexis is about 5.5 millimeter. And it is overlapping the intraocular lens all around. This is ideal rexus. If we can do this, if we train ourselves to do this, we can manage most of the cases without femto laser. And if we have a variant, we can get a guide, good guide to undo the rexus. 
So femtosecond laser just for Rexis is a bad investment. This is my personal opinion. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.